Well, greetings and salutations, test takers. This is the Series 7 Guru coming to you from my studio, not in fabulous Las Vegas, but to my off-grid studio from an undisclosed location in Northern Arizona. We have another explication request. The best free uh, supplement to your paid study materials is my YouTube channel. But if you don't have a Kaplan QBank, I highly recommend it. Uh, for Series 7, you can get it for $55.80. Uh, using my Guru 15% uh, percent discount code at checkout for that commercial, Kaplan allows me to give you a free look at Kaplan content like this. Uh, zero coupon bonds uh, is the request. If it's a Kaplan question, you can just send me a QID. I'll help you with any question, SDC, past perfect, uh, whatever the case may be. But in that case, you need to screenshot it to me. Uh, this is the request. An investor purchased a corporate zero coupon bond. You are going to get tested on zero coupon bonds. You definitely need to know that zero coupon bonds are good for somebody who needs a set sum of money at some future date, you know, like college education. Every once in a while, people take exception to a practice question I wrote about. It's not a 529. And I say, read the question again. It says certain sum of money. You're not going to have a certain sum of money when you're in a 529 because of the underlying performance of the fund. Anyways, uh, set sum of money. Uh, they're good for somebody who wants to lock in a rate of return because in a regular bond, every six months, you're getting a payment and you have to decide uh, what to do with that payment. And your overall rate of return will be dependent on that. So you have reinvestment risk. But here, your zero coupon bond, that rate of return is locked in. You know, there are three issuers of these zero coupon bonds. There are corporate issuers, municipal issuers, and the U.S. government, treasury strips or treasury receipts, not by the government, but same general idea. And uh, this is a corporate, it says zero coupon bonds. Zero means no income pay uh, payments, right? In the old days, bonds had coupons. You'd clip the coupon, take it to the uh, appropriate instrumentality bank and get paid. And here there is no coupon. You know, the first guy who did this uh, stripped the coupons from the bond and sold it individually. Now they're just issued that way. Anyways, this is a corporate zero coupon bond uh, priced at 51. So when we first came up with this product, we tried to tell the IRS, that the difference between the 510, 51% of par, and par, 1,000 is a long-term capital gain. And the IRS said, eh. you have to do straight line amortization upward called accretion. And that's what this question is about. Now, I, I can't imagine any draw of the test where I'm not going to ask you to recognize that you must accrete a zero coupon bond. This bond is practical. This question is about practical application. And I think it's more uh, likely, higher probability, that you're going to have to do amortization on a mini bond at a premium downward than actually this. Okay, that being said, the bond matures in 17 years. So if I uh, bought this bond at 51 and I held it to maturity, at, at maturity I have no gain or loss because I would have adjusted the price upward each year. So that's what it looks like if I hold it, but it doesn't say that. It says seven years later, I sell the bond for 73 and three quarters. What are the tax consequences? Okay, so what that means now is I'm going to have to do the straight line amortization upward, the accretion, to actually see what is my adjusted cost base, right? So 510, I'm getting back 1,000 if I hold it to maturity. So we're going to have to do straight line amortization upward called accretion. We're going to have to adjust the cost base on the bond. The difference between what I paid my cost basis, and what I get is 1000 510 So 490 is the amount that I have to accrete each year. It said I've held it uh, for seven years. So 490 divided by 17 years, I should adjust my cost basis $28.82 each year. And it tells me in the question that I've had it for seven years. So seven years times $28.82. Uh, by the way, it is testable to know that $28.82 each year that I'm not receiving is taxable. That kind of sucks. I'm going to be paying taxes each year on $28.82 I'm actually not receiving. The concept of paying taxes on money you're not actually receiving is called phantom income. So anyway, seven years times $28.82. And that means my adjusted cost base after seven years is 711.74, right? That's the 201.74 plus the 510. 
So that's my adjusted cost base. Then it says I sell it for 73 and three quarters, 73 and three quarters. Again, I shouldn't be fumbling around with that, but if you get stuck on what three quarters is, you know, I think 73 is easy. That's 730. And then three quarters, you could take your calculator, three divided by four times a bond point of 10, and that gives you the 73,750. Uh, so that's uh, my sales proceeds. And so I'm just going to now net the sales proceeds from my adjusted cost base. And I come up with the answer, which is $25.75, uh, 76 cents. That is the answer to this question. Again, I don't think you're going to have to do practical application of this on your test. I do think all the other stuff I told you, recognition, is very testable. That, you know, when you buy a, mini, a zero coupon bond, you have to do straight line amortization upward called accretion. The accreted adjustment is taxable unless it's a muni OID or zero. Uh, they're good for somebody who wants to lock in a rate of return. Uh, they have no reinvestment risk along the way. You might have a bigger problem at the end, but no reinvestment risk. And uh, again, um, these are, by the way, I'd had one more test question. They're very volatile with interest rates, much more volatile. So the 17-year zero is going to be much more uh, more volatile than a 17-year muni bond uh, with an income statement. All right. Well, I hope you found that explication helpful. Again, send any questions you may have my way. Uh, you can send those to series7guru at guruprep.com. And I'm more than happy to help you with any questions you may have. Remember, inch by inch. Your Series 7 is a cinch, yard by yard, your Series 7 is hard, and I'll see you for the next explication request.